Hello, I'm Aksuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, we've been talking about the blessing of Abraham. And this week I told you we're sharing on the covenants God had to make to enforce his promise to Abraham. Now, we on Monday and Tuesday, we talked about tithing. Tithing was a covenant that God caught with Abraham. And I explained that to you. Praise God. Now, we are going on talking about the second covenant this week. But before we go into that, can we make requests for our daily bread? Jesus asked us to do this. Praise God. Are you ready to expect a miracle today? Join me right now with faith in your heart and make this demand. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, glory. Now, Whenever we do this, expect a miracle. Like I told you yesterday, it doesn't matter what you're looking for. It doesn't matter what you're expecting from God. Believe that you receive it right now as we have made this request and you shall have it. That's what Jesus said. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, then. Now, we've talked about tithing. Now, I'm bringing the awareness to you that there was actually a covenant. And then... Later, we'll now dissect these two covenants and how it affects us today. So now we've talked about Titan. Now let's go over to the next second covenant that God made with Abraham. And we'll find that in Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17 and from verse 1. I want to start from verse 1 so we'll get the background of this story. When Abraham was 99 years old, now take note of that. Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant. Take note. I will make my covenant between me and you. Now, Abraham was 99 years old now. God shows up again and he's telling him, look, I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Take focus on the line of discussion now. God says, I will make my covenant between me and you. Remember that there has been a promise that has not yet been fulfilled at this time. So now God says, I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly. So I will go to multiply you. Okay. Then Abraham fell on his face and talked with God saying, as for an and God talked with him, sorry, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. Okay? For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Take notes. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations out of you. He is telling this man, you're going to have children. You're going to have multitudes coming out from you. <laughs> you know, God can be funny sometimes. You understand what I'm saying that now? Praise God. Watch this. Mm. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, verse, five, verse 6. And I will make nations of you. And kings shall come from you. This man is 99 years old. Kings shall come out from you. <laughs> and I will establish my covenant between you and me and your descendants after you in their generations. Take note of this statement. I will establish my covenant between me and you and in and your descendants after you in their generations. Take note. Take note. I'll read it again. And verse 7, chapter 17, Genesis. 
and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. He's not just saying your this next descendant. He's saying in their different generations. Now we'll go back to this thing later on. But let it register in your mind that God says in their generations for an everlasting covenant. So God is saying this covenant that I'm making with you is an everlasting. When God says something is an everlasting covenant, it will never change. Keep that in your mind. We're going somewhere with this. Now, what, this is what he said. To be God to you and your descendants after you. So I will be your God. And then I will also be the God of your descendants after you. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, verse 8. Watch. I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. Take notes. Everlasting possession. It's yours. Now, God specifically said the land of Canaan. Hmm. Let's read verse 8 again. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land of Canaan. I just summarized that whole statement. The land of Canaan. As an everlasting possession. God's promise. What does it mean everlasting possession? See the land of Canaan? Abraham owns it forever. You can't change it. Hold on. Mm. And I will be their God. Not just you now. When you leave, I will be their God. Now you see why God had to introduce himself to Isaac, had to introduce himself to Jacob. Abraham didn't need to beg him, oh God, you have to visit my children. Nah, nah, nah. There's a covenant. Now watch this covenant. Let's go to verse 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, this is the interesting part. And God said to Abraham, as for you, I told you, a covenant can never be one-sided. The both parties or the individual parties in the covenant have roles to play. So God has said his own part in this covenant now. Then he goes over to say, and he says, verse, verse 9 again, and God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. Take note again, throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. Mm. And you shall be sec and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your first kid. Notice God says, Every male child among you shall be circumcised. Okay, so we begin to look at all the male children. Then he went forth and said, And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Mm. So God says, Hey, Abraham, I've promised you this land, and I've promised you I'll be your God, and I'll give you this land. Now, this is what we're going to do. I want us to get into a covenant because of the promise that I have made to you. Okay? So this is the covenant. I've already told you what I'm going to do. Your part in this covenant is that every male child from now and their descendants in their different generations. Now, when he says generations, up till this day, the different now remember he says i've given it to you for an everlasting covenant the land right then he says this covenant you shall keep not just to your descendants in their generations please let that sink in now this is god speaking this is not a preacher preaching this is god speaking to abraham take note of his words hmm. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he says, every male child shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised. And that circumcision shall be a sign of the covenant between us. So whenever that sign, whenever that I see that sign, I'll remember, you see, that we are in a covenant. Mm. Verse 12. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with money from a foreign, from any foreigner who is not your descendants. He who is born, if they want to have rights in that household, if they want to have right in that covenant, God actually permitted that a stranger can join in this covenant. Yeah, he did. But then they must be circumcised. That's what God was saying. Mm. He who is, he says, let me read that part again. Verse 12. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations generations take note who he who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Now, in their generations, anyone who refused to be circumcised shall be cut off. That's what God said. Mm. Why? Because he has broken the covenant. Mm. <laughs> now, I want us to jump. Now, he began to speak about Sarah. Now, I want us to jump to verse 23. Okay, verse 22. Now, what, look at verse. Now, he, uh, he began to speak about Abraham, right? Uh, he began to speak about Sarah. Verse 21. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac. Now, uh... You know, thank you, Holy Spirit. Anyway, God spoke and told Sarah, Sarah, I'll have a child and call his name Isaac. Let's, I want us to focus on verse 22. Then he finished talking with him and God went and God went up from Abraham. So immediately God finished talking to Abraham. He left. <laughs> now watch what Abraham did. Verse 23. So Abraham took Ishmael his son, all who were born in his house, all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin that very same day. <laughs> this guy doesn't waste time at all. You remember the Titan? The moment Melchizedek taught him about tithing, he said, okay, wait for me, sir. He went and they got all the one-tenth of everything he had and he brought it to Melchizedek. He doesn't waste time. Now, you see here, God finished talking to Abraham and left. The moment God left, he said, okay, sir. He turned, Ishmael, come here. Um, um, Gehazi, yes, uh, no, not Gehazi. Eliza, yes, sir. Gather all the, 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 the young men. Yeah, gather them. Want to do something? <laughs> Praise God. And then he got all of them. And the Bible said that same day, hmm. as God have said to him, verse 24, Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. 99 now uh, you 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 will not understand what transpired here you just think it's oh god just said, hey hey <laughs> god shows up and god have been saying to this man now you remember the tight issue right and god says look take bread and wine this is my covenant with you that i will sustain you okay sir 
Thank you. Yes. Now, everything you have, I want you to give it away. Ha! Huh? Yes. Don't take even a shoelace from all these goods. He just gave tight of those things. Are you following? Now, God says, take it. Give it back to the, give it back to the king of Sodom. Not because they really belong to the king of Sodom. No, they were spoils of war right now. They belonged to the king of Sodom before. An enemy came, fought them, overpowered them, and took all these things. Now, Abraham went. They didn't go in partnership. Abraham went to that war by himself. And so these are the spoils of war. But God says, no, I don't want you to have it. I want you to, you just said you will take care of me. And now I have all these goods. Give it out. Okay, sir. Now God shows up again and says, Abraham, yes, sir. I'm going to multiply you. You're going to have children. I'm going to bring forth nations out of you. You are going to experience all this great multitude grow up and they will come from you. Kings are going to be coming out from you. Okay. So listen, this is what I'm going to do in your life. Thank you, sir. Now this is your part that you're going to do. Okay. So what's my part? You are going to tamper with the reproductive organ through which you are going to bring forth these children. And how old was this man? 99 years. Huh? You see, you, you can't be telling me, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> and at this stage, you are saying, I should tamper with the very thing that is going to be the main tool to bring in your word to pass in my life. You see, God doesn't think like a man. Never. You know, now today, if we hear of circumcision, like a normal thing, I mean, uh, it, yeah, it's still painful for the children, but it's, it's normal. Now, you know, oh, your child's going to circumcise and they, oh, no, okay, no problem. We'll bring him. Who's going to do it? Okay, the doctor, the midwife. Okay, no problem, no problem. Now, this was the first time anyone was talking about this and this man was 99 years old and god said you too will be circumcised <laughs> so what if <laughs> see <laughs> Our time is up. <laughs> Father, I pray for everyone watching. Specifically, Lord, today for the grace to walk with you in that lonely road, that road that only you can take man to walk through. So that we learn not to lean on any other thing but you. And that our trust will be very clear and focused on you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.